No, today we can discuss about the method of proof. So there are various methods of proof we have to use in uh, propositional logic and predicate calculus. So that is a part of that uh, first chapter. So the proof are, first is the direct proof. So there are various proofs we have discussed in today's class. One is the direct proof, indirect proof, or proof by contraposition, and proof by contradiction, then proof by cases, and proof by counterexample. So one by one we can discuss all this proof, and based on the proof we can describe certain problem based on the certain proof. So first we can discuss about the direct proof. In direct proof, we assume, we assume that P is true and based on the information and fact we find the final conclusion the Q is also that is the conclusion Q is true based on the premises based on premises or available information we can say Q is also true so in a direct proof we can take a chain rule or we can take a chain of statement or chain of statement this is p comma p1 comma p2 up to pn implies to q so then all the premises are true then only the conclusion become true so here in a direct proof we can say p implies to q p1 uh, we can say it. that is a p implies to p1, p1 implies to p2, p3 implies to p4, and so on up to pn implies to q. So here are the axioms, or we can say the implication preceding to it in case of direct proof. So here we can take one example of the direct proof so the problem is that x and y we can say x and y are odd integer or the problem is x and y are odd integer then x plus y is even integer even integer. So that is the we can prove that x plus y are odd integer. Then x plus y is an even integer. So how it can be proved? That can be proved based on the direct proof method. So here we can take x and y are the odd integer. So what we can take so if suppose x and y are odd integer, so x and y are odd integer, that is we can take x equal to 2m1 plus 1. So that is odd integer means we can write down x equal to 2m plus 1, where m is any integer and it is an integer it should be start from 1 2 3 4 so that if suppose the value of m is 0 then x equal to 1 if the value of m is 1 then 2 into 1 plus 1 it is 3 then m equal to 2 it become 5 and so on so it is nothing but a set of odd integer so we can take x equal to odd integer then we have to take x equal to 2 m 1 plus 1 and y equal to 2 m 2 plus 1 where m1 and m2 are any integer value. So now the direct proof says x plus y if the, uh, the direct proof says the p is true based on the available information we can find the conclusion is also true. So we can say the chain of statement p comma p1 comma p2 up to pn implies to q it is the p implies to p1, p1 implies to p2 and pn implies to q is axiom or implies to preceding to its. 
So here the same we can concept use x and y are all integer. We can take any numbers x equal to 2m1 plus and y equal to 2m2 plus 1. So now what is x plus y? x plus y we can take we can just add 2m1 plus 1 plus 2m2 plus 1. So it is equal to uh, 2 times m1 plus m2 plus 1. So that x plus y we can take 2 times m1 plus m2 plus 1. So all that term it is multiplied by 2. So we can say it is a even number or it is a even integer. So that is proved x plus y is an even integer. So that is the first proof. Now we can take another problem. The problem number 2 prove that we can take another problem mod a is greater than mod b then a square greater than b square so it is also proof with the help of direct proof method so in a direct proof method we say that the mod a is greater than mod b as we know so mod a square is greater than mod b square and as we know mod a square is nothing but a square and mod b square is the b square so we can say a square is greater than b square so that's the way in which we can solve the direct proof method next proof is that the indirect proof So next is indirect proof or we can also call it as a proof of contrapositive or contraposition proof of contraposition. So in the case of the indirect proof, we one thing you have to remember the thing is that in case of implication we can say P implies Q that is the based on the hypothesis P we can find the conclusion Q P implies Q and the contrapositive of this P implies Q is negation Q implies to negation P so indirect proof says if suppose the P implies Q is existing so the contrapositive negation Q implies negation P is also true so if P implies Q is true then quantum positive negation Q implies negation Q also true. So that type of problem we can solve based on the indirect proof. So how to solve this type of problem? We can take even problem. So the problem is proof alpha square is an integer and prove alpha square is an even integer then alpha is even integer so you want to prove alpha square is an even integer then alpha is an even integer so that type of proof we can solve based on the indirect proof suppose we can take p alpha square is an even integer and q we have to take alpha is an even integer so let we can take negation q is true because as we know earlier so p implies q is true the indirectly negation q implies negation p also true that is the approach we can call as a indirect proof so negation q is true that means alpha is even integer is a q and negation q is true that means alpha is and or we can say alpha is an odd integer so when alpha is an odd integer so we know that that it is in the term of 2m plus 1 so the alpha equal to 2m plus 1 where m is 
any integer. So, because it is odd number, if suppose it is an even number that is become in the form of 2m, so alpha equal to 2m plus 1. So now what is alpha square? Alpha square equal to 2m plus 1 whole square. So when the now the 2m plus 1 whole square, it is a 4m square plus 4m plus 1. It is nothing but a square plus b square plus 2ab. So it is a square 4m square plus 4m plus 1. So we can just common 2 and it is indeed 2m square plus 2m plus 1. So we can just common 2 in between 2 term. It is 2m square plus 2m. So we can write it is nothing but 2m plus 1 where n equal to uh, 2m square plus 2m. So what we can do, we can just find the alpha square. It is 2m plus a plus b the whole square. And it is 4m square plus 4m plus 1. We can just common in between the this is 2 term. We can just common 2. It is 2m square plus 2m plus 1. That term we can treat it as a n. So it is 2n plus 1. So n, that uh, value, it is always generated as a odd integer. So alpha square is n odd integer. So here we can prove negation q is true, then negation p is also true. Because uh, the alpha is odd, then alpha square is also odd. So here we can say negation q implies negation p is also true. So we can say this is the proof by the indirect proof. They can be proof based on the proof by contraposition. So in proof by contraposition, one thing you have to remember in your mind, while p implies q is true, then we can say the contrapositive says negation q implies negation p, which is also true. So we can prove indirectly, we can take first negation q and we can prove as a negation p. So negation p is nothing but alpha square is an odd integer, that is a negation p. So it is nothing but proof. So now the next one, we can take an example of, so here that is the proof the alpha square is even integer, then alpha is even integer. So that is proof. So next we can discuss the proof which is called as a proof by contraposition. That is the proof by contraposition we have to discuss. Now the next proof is uh, proof by contradiction. Next proof is proof by contradiction. So in this case, proof by contradiction, we can say that for certain value it is true and certain value, the truth value becomes false. So in that case, proof by contradiction, the certain things we have to require like that it is based on fact that a statement is either true a statement is either true or false is either true or false but not both but not both at same time so it is a, in proof of contradiction it is based on fact that certain time the statement is either true or false but not false but not both at same time either both the statement is true or both all the statement is become a false so we get a contradiction when we get a contradiction when 
we arrive at a situation where we arrive at a situation where the statement is both true or false at same time. So that is the point we have to remember in proof by contradiction it is based on fact that the statement is either true or false but not both at same time. So we get a contradiction when we arrive a situation where the statement is both true or false. Means either all the statement become true or either both the statement become false. So here in the assumption we can say it is in the part of inconsistency. So, so we summarize the step. So that is the first things you have to remember step is assume that P is false. And second step, so whatever the expression is given, we can say assume that P is uh, false or the another statement we can say using this assumption we can find the contradiction so the contradiction so the step is assume that P is false and using this assumption we can show that it is a contradiction so to prove the statement P is true, so the statement P is true, we can say negation P. We can find the negation P, and negation P is also we can call as a true. So negation P implies to F it is true. We want to find. So the step is that proof by contradiction means and say all the value are true then the contradiction we can generate all the value become false so here the step is you should know whatever the assumption is premises are given you can just take as a reverse the, if p is true then we can start with the p is a false and then using the assumption we can show the final conclusion so that uh, step we can how to solve this type of problem we can take even more problem in which we have to more clarify how to solve the problem based on the proof by contradiction. So first problem is that show that root 2 is not rational number. So it can be solved proof by contradiction. So proof by contradiction says it is just first we can reverse p is a false. First step is assume p is false and based on the assumption we can conclude the contradiction. So that step we can cover we can say assume uh, root 2 is a rational number is not a rational number and we can say uh, the thing is that it is a rational number we can start with it is a rational number so what we can take suppose negation p is true what is a p p is nothing but root 2 is rational numbers so negation p is negation p is root 2 is a not rational number is p is given so here the negation p is true that means root 2 is a rational number so it is root 2 is a rational number then what we can take here we can try root 2 equal to p divided by q where in that case p divided q where q is not equal to 0 so because every rational number expressed in the form of p divided q where q is not equal to 0. So root 2 equal to p divided q we can square both the term 
we can got two q square equal to p square. So here we can say p square is even. So we can say p is also even integer. So we can take p is a even integer. So we can take p equal to just as a two n, where m is any integer. So uh, what is the p square equal to four n square? We can substitute in equation one, and we can get the two q square equal to four m square. So q square equal to two m square. We can say q square is even. Or the q is also even. So in that case, we can say the root two is not a rational number. So here, so in that case, we can say root two is not a rational number. So now this is the one problem we can solve based on the proof by contradiction. Now another problem we can again take. Uh, this problem we can solve based on the proof by contradiction. So the next problem is uh, suppose suppose that the integer one, two, three up to ten. Are arranged one to ten are randomly positioned around a circular B. Randomly positioned around a circular B. Then. So that sum of some set of so that sum of some set of three consecutive number at least fifteen. So what the problem is that suppose that the integer one to ten are Randomly positioned around a circular wheel, so we can just take a circular wheel. Around the randomly number, we can position up to a1, a2, a3, a4, and up to a10. So the sum of some set of three consecutive number is at least 15. So that problem we can again solve by proof by contradiction. So what we can do? We can take a sum of some set of three consecutive number. Suppose first we can take a one, a two, a three. Then once the next consecutive number become a two, a three, a four. Next number a three, a four, and a five, and so on. And in that way we can solve the whole number, which is at least fifteen. So. The equation is like that: a1 plus a2 plus a3 is less than equal to 15. a2 plus a3 plus a4, which again less than equal to 15, and so on. And last, a10 plus a1 plus a2, which is less than equal to 15. So that is the equation number one. So I just want to say it is a a1 plus a2 plus a3. So the sum of some set of Three consecutive number is at least fifteen, which is less than equal to fifteen. So that is the equation number one. Now the second equation we can say is where a one plus a two plus a three up to a ten, which is equal to we can say. One plus two plus three up to plus ten. That is the equation number two. 
So because total number of uh, value we can take the integers is 1 to 10 are randomly positioned. So it may be it 4 come first and 2 come second and 8 come third and like that any positions. So the thing is that sum of some set of 3 consecutive numbers is at least 15 so the equation is like that. Now proof by contradiction says if negation p is true. Negation p is true means so we can uh, proof by contradiction so that equation we can say the equation 1 we can write in the form of uh, we can say equation 1 is false so what we can so the resultant value in a1 plus a2 plus a3 which is less than equal to 15 now is greater than 14 it is just reverse greater than 14 because less than equal to 15 or we can say uh, it is greater than 14 so subset of the combinations is at least 15 so the sum so just a minute so so that sum of some set of three consecutive number is at least 15 means more than it is 15 it is not the at least 15 means it 15 or more than 15 so we can just take the equation is like that it is greater than equal to 15 it is greater than equal to 15 so now we want to just the equation become false it is like that a1 plus a2 plus a3 which is less than 15 and a2 plus a3 plus a4 is less than 15 and so on up to a10 plus a1 plus a2 is less than 15. So this we can solve this equation in inequalities form. We can also write similar equation in that way. Uh, a1 plus a2 plus a3 is less than equal to 14. a2 plus a3 plus a4 is less than equal to 14 and so on up to a10 plus a1 plus a2 is less than equal to 14. Now, we can just summarize all this term. We find 3 times a1 plus a2 plus a3 which is and up to 3 times a1 plus a2 plus a3 plus a4 up to plus a10 which is less than equal to 140. So now this equation some you have you, uh, we know that is equal to 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus up to 10. So it is 3 times and when we can just uh, the summation of 1 plus 2 plus 3 up to 10 plus 10 equal to nothing but it is the n n plus 1 divided by 2 10 into 10 plus 1 divided by 2 which is 10 into 11 uh, divided by 2 which is 55 so here we find uh, 3 into 1 plus 2 plus 3 up to plus 10 which is less than 140 it is 3 times, we can just find n n plus 1, 10 into 11 divided by 2, so less than 140. It is got 3 into 55, which is less than 140. And 3 into 55 is 165 is less than 140. It is a false. It is a false, so that's why it is a contradiction. So here, it is a contradiction and we can prove that the sum of set of 3 consecutive number is at least 15. So the problem is like that. How to solve this type of problem? First whatever the things we can say you can write in the equation, linear equation form. Then the sum of uh, some set of n numbers we can take 1 plus 2 up to 10 and then that particular equation proved by contradiction says negation p is true or we can say p is a false. So we can just convert this equation into the false equation and that equation we can prove based on the mathematical calculation we can find 165 less than equal to 140 which is false and proof by the contradiction we can say this is a proof based on the contradiction approach. So now the next problem or next parts we can discuss which is the proof by 
counter example. So next is proof by counter example. So in proof by counter example, we can say for all x comma p of x for all x comma p of x we can solve at any specific example counter example we can take a value of k where p of k is false where p of k is false so we can say that maybe it is true or maybe disproved so for a specific example we must say so it is maybe true or maybe false so how it will be proved we can take just an example x square equal to y square by conditional x equal to y you can prove or disprove so here we can take an example of minus 5 comma 5 so minus 5 square which is equal to 5 square so here we can say uh, it is a 25 equal to 25 by conditional but minus 5 is not equal to 5 so for certain the left para, the left portion it is proved but in the right portion x equal to y it is disproved so that technique we can call as a proof by counter example so in case of proof by counter example uh, we can say the result is false and we can say implication is false so next example we can discuss that is a proof by cases So last step which is proof by cases. Sometime we prove based on the conditional statement. So in based on the conditional statement we can say P1 or P2 or up to Pn implies to Q. In case we can find out the proof of equivalence like that P1 or P2 or P3 up to or Pn implies Q which is equivalent to P1 implies Q or we can say it is P2 implies Q and it is P3 implies Q and so on up to Pn implies to Q. So, Proof by cases, so for a certain proof, it can depend on certain cases. For certain cases, if implication is true, then the value become true should be generated based on the conditional statements. So, these are the expressions we can solve based on the proof by cases. So, this type of statement can be proved by proving each conditional statement separately and this proof is known as proof by cases. Because in every statement we can separately prove that P1 implies to Q and P2 implies to Q and P3 implies to Q and so on. So that's the way in which we can just prove the proof by cases. So now uh, that is we have to just complete these all the methods proof and uh, now our chapter is finished.